Hi everyone, welcome to Scale Testing Looker. My name is Sharon Zhang. I'm a senior consultant on the Looker Professional Services team. I've been with Looker for about five and a half years and I specialize on the topic of scaling and scale testing Looker. So what is scale testing in the context of Looker? Well, a scale test is a data-driven exploration of a Looker usage scenario. In a scale test, we define service level objectives or SLOs and seek to understand the correct Looker architecture and infrastructure changes or customizations that are needed to achieve those desired SLOs. A scale test also has the added benefit of ensuring the long-term growth of your Looker instance and the performance for your business. Why is scale testing important? The main reason is that a single Looker instance cannot scale infinitely. The law of diminishing returns applies to a clustered or single node even Looker environment. If we look at the graph on the right hand side, you'll see performance on the Y axis and number of nodes in the cluster or the cost of the infrastructure for your Looker on the X axis. As you increase the number of nodes in the beginning, you'll see an improvement or an increase in performance delivered. Then we hit the point of maximum yield. And after that point, what happens is that as we add additional nodes, we do not see the same increase in performance. And in some cases, we even see decreases in performance or worse performance. And the reason for that is because the cost of node to node communication between the different nodes of Looker within the cluster has become so high that it's driving these negative returns on your investment. Before we continue to talk about scale testing Looker, it's important for us to understand how we can scale Looker. There are two main methodologies. The first one is vertical scaling. So what this means is that we have a single node of Looker and to scale it, we increase the size of the instance by providing more CPU and more memory. The second method of scaling is called horizontal scaling. And there are two ways of doing this. The first way is we can cluster that single node of Looker and turn it into a cluster with multiple nodes with a load balancer on top that helps to direct traffic to different nodes and spread the load across your different nodes of Looker. As mentioned in the previous slide, this method of horizontal scaling does not scale infinitely, so we cannot add infinite numbers of nodes. So once we come to that point of maximum yield or that maximum number of nodes that a single Looker cluster can handle, we can move on to the second way of horizontal scaling, which is adding a, another cluster altogether. The important thing about this type of horizontal scaling is that these two Looker clusters do not communicate with each other and cannot communicate with each other. So what we need to build outside of the Looker application layer is a way to route user traffic to these different clusters. A good example of this type of horizontal scaling is when you have a global user base and you spin up multiple Looker clusters in different regions. For example, we can spin up a US hosted Looker cluster and a European hosted cluster. Then our external application layer can route our US based user base to the US cluster and it can route the European users to the US based cluster. Now that we understand how Looker can scale, how do we determine whether or not you need a scale test to be done for your use case? The main indication that you'll see for needing a scale test is this first bullet here is you have high usage of a very specific type of activity in your instance. So here are a couple of examples. You have a large number of concurrent users consuming content or doing a specific type of activity at the same time. Another example is if you have a high volume of schedule during some peak usage hours. Another one is you have a very large number of custom fields that are distributed at the tenant level, or even if you just have a large number of custom fields in an explorer that everyone has access to. Those are all great indicators that you need a scale test to make sure that Looker can support your use case. 
Some other indicators could be that you want pre-launch assurance to make sure that your looker architecture and infrastructure is up to par to be able to support your use case. Another indicator is if you are using Looker in a pretty unique way and need confirmation that what you're using Looker for will actually work. And then the last one on here is that you don't currently have a high volume use case, but you plan on having such a use case in the future. And you want to make sure that you're setting up your Looker architecture in the right way so that it can scale in the future. A question that may have crossed your mind during this presentation is, Hey, Looker, don't you already know the correct size for me? We host thousands of Looker instances. How do we not know what you need? Well, the short answer is no. Unfortunately, we don't know. The reason for that is the specific combination of Looker object volumes and activities could actually result in fairly large fluctuations in performance. So individual use cases should be tested before launch so we can evaluate that very specific activity mix so we can give you the detailed recommendations for how to set up your infrastructure. Some examples of high object volumes that we're referencing here could be lots of schedules, user attributes, models, projects, explores, fields, or high concurrency of users. Those are all indicators that you need to do a scale test. So how do we run a scale test to determine the right scale for your Looker instance? Here are five steps to running a scale test. Number one is we want to define your service level objectives for your product that you are trying to launch. What do you want to commit to delivering to your end users in terms of Looker performance? Once you have that defined, we can move on to step two, which is building out the Looker content and models that need to be tested. In this step, it's very important that the content and the data that you use to power that content is exactly the same as what you're going to use in production and in your launch. The closer we can get in our test scenario to reality, the more accurate your results will be. Once we have that, we can move on to step three, which is creating a test plan outlining different predicted scenarios. Scale testing often happens pre-launch where we don't know exactly what end users will end up doing in your application that you're about to launch. So the test plan helps you outline different predicted scenarios so that you can cover all your bases or cover more bases so that you can ensure higher success in your launch and in that Looker can support the different activity mixes that may happen in your launch product. And next in step four, we write our automation test scripts for the load testing tool. These scripts are intended to mimic the activity that a real user would perform in your application. So we write these in the same sequence in the automation test scripts. And finally, in step five, we run our load tests in several iterations and make customizations to our Looker infrastructure to improve performance. There are many tools out there to help run load tests, and we have a Looker developed open source Python application called NFO that you can use. NFO utilizes Locus, which is a browser-based testing framework and adds the ability to run those browser-based tests in a containerized and orchestrated environment, which in this case is Google Kubernetes Engine or GKE. It can be used to perform both browser-based and API-based activities in Looker. Let's talk a little bit more about the methodology behind NFO. So we've set up a scalable GKE cluster that's running or hosting our Locus clusters. And what's happening within your Locus clusters is you have your browser sessions that are being spawned and loading Looker activity. This Looker activity is being measured for performance and response. All of the browser activity that's happening in these headless browser sessions is being powered by a Looker instance that you've set up. This could be a test instance that closely mimics what we think we'll have in production. And connected to this Looker instance is our database. Again, this is either your production database 
or a test database that closely mimics or resembles your production data base and data set. Let's take a look at a real test scenario. Here's the problem that we were trying to solve. We were launching an embedded application to around 8,000 users in the next month. During peak usage times, we expected to have around 1,200 concurrent users loading one of three dashboards. The question was, will my looker be able to handle that load? So what we did was we designed and ran a scale test to mimic the actual usage scenario. The service level objective that we defined was we wanted to ensure that 95% of all dashboard loads did not exceed the baseline dashboard load time by more than 30%. So the baseline load time was 15 seconds, which meant that we did not want our dashboard load times under load to exceed more than 19.5 seconds. So we ran through several iterations of this test and made changes to looker configurations and architecture. And we were able to determine in the end that we needed a large nine node cluster with some custom startup options to support the expected 1200 concurrent users at peak usage times. On the right hand side, you can see some of the metrics that we were able to collect from this test. We actually were able to complete the test and support 1500 concurrent users, which gave the customer a little bit of headroom above their 1200 estimated number. We had nine nodes in the cluster and we were actually able to achieve a 17 second average load time for 95% of our total dashboard loads. We ran this particular load test for about 45 minutes. In general, we recommend that you run a load test for a prolonged period of time, maybe up to three hours, to make sure that Looker can actually sustain the large load that you've placed onto it. And finally, I wanted to share some screenshots from a Grafana dashboard that comes with the NFO load testing tool. Grafana helps us visualize metrics that are being tracked by Locust during the load test, and we can see these metrics change over the course of our load test. I wanted to call out a couple of metrics in here that may be of interest to you when you're running your own load test. The first number that I wanted to talk about is current RPS. That's front and center in that first screenshot. The number is 23.4. What that stands for is request per second. And the definition of request may change depending on the context of your load test. The activity that we tested in ours was the loading of three dashboards. So request in our case means dashboard loads per second. So we were able to hit this number of 23 dashboard loads per second. The second metric that I wanted to call your attention to is the bottom right graph for response time, that will show you the 95th percentile performance of your requests, as well as the 50th percentile of your requests. And those can help you determine how the majority of your users are faring in your load test. And that wraps up our discussion today about scale testing Looker. Thank you everyone for coming and enjoy the rest of your join 2021.